is only war. What is up, gents? 40K Dirtbags here. We're gonna do a special video for you guys to how to deploy for turn one for 40K. So with this edition, it kind of was like last edition with ninth edition, where if you focus on secondaries, you're gonna win the game. Uh, it's not all about killing your opponent or taking them off you know, the table or tabling them. It's mainly about whoever does the best secondaries gets the most points, which in, in the end wins the game. So we're gonna be focusing on turn one for 10th edition, how to get the most secondary points and really how to set up the table to your best advantage and whatever army you play. So it's not specifically for the armies that we play on the 40K Dirtbag channel. It's mainly for any army that you guys play. We're gonna go over special units that you could be bringing, special strategies, where you want to be setting up, deployment, all that stuff to get you guys the most points you possibly can in 40K. So hopefully this video finds you guys uh, well and hopefully it finds you and you can share it with all of your other friends because there's so many 40K channels out there. Uh, I'm not on all of them. So we kind of just share the video and kind of get uh, 40K dirtbags out there. We are ranked number one in Chaos Space Marine player in the world. We were ranked number one Great Knight player in the world last year. So next year, who the hell knows, we might go for Death Guard, uh, but it's really just trying to get you guys better at, at the 40k game with doing tactic bit of tactical videos like this. Uh, and if you guys are Patreons, I appreciate you guys clicking on the video. You guys wouldn't be doing this without you. Uh, and we upload all these videos first on patreon.com before they hit YouTube. So that just gives you a little insight on what their bags are doing and what we're trying to grow into. So with this video, I picked Death Guard. <laughs> For the example, uh, as a setup army, uh, we do have Grey Knights, we do have Chaos Space Marines, we have Custodes and Sisters, but Death Guard are, are my new toys. Uh, they just got the update and they're super slow. So if you can do first turn uh, secondaries with Death Guard, you can basically do it with any single army in the game. So we're gonna go over kind of where to deploy, what units you're looking to put into your army and how to set up uh, first, first uh, turn Secondaries. So let's get into it. We got an overview for you guys right here. Just to give you an example. This is the setup we just did for an example, the nine inch in the center, because this is one of the hardest ones to do secondaries, especially with engage and all the different quarters. Uh, so I picked out all the secondaries you guys need uh, right here. These are the ones you're gonna be doing actions for and setting up your deployment based off of these secondaries. The other ones are all random, they're all killy. So that's gonna be just random on what you guys pick. But if you plan for these, two, four, six, eight, nine secondaries, nine out of 16 secondaries. If you plan for these secondaries, you will have a better outcome in the game and get better at 40K in general with any army that you guys play. So first off, uh, with our army right here, we have a unit of scout move guys. Now, if you have anything in your army that can scout move, uh, usually cheap, uh, you're gonna be bringing them and just specifically focus on turn one uh, secondaries, making things sticky, or just getting into areas of the deployment that you're not at already currently. The second thing is infiltrators. So right now we have two units of Nurglings on the table. They're infiltrating uh, outside nine inches of the opponent's deployment zone and in two different table quarters. Lastly, uh, if you have anything that can come off a uh, strategic reserve, like Chaos Bikes, for example, they're going to be starting all the way in the back corner here so that way they, they can go back off uh, in the opponent's movement phase and just be super annoying uh, for secondaries later on in the game. There's a lot of units uh, in the game that can come down, you know, outside nine inches. They can rapid ingress. They can uh, come in turn one. They can come in from reserves a turn earlier. There's a lot of different examples of coming in from the board edge turn one. Uh, for a stratagem, for an enhancement, or come down within three inches, like teleport assault for Grey Knights. So there's a lot of different examples of units that you're gonna be bringing specifically just for the turn one scout move, infiltrate, or strategic reserves. So that's my example of the units that we're gonna be bringing uh, to, for the table setup. For Grey Knights, uh, we have the auto advance six. Some armies can do that. We have the scout move six with the strikes. Uh, and then we have teleport assault, which we could do turn one if we go second. So that's just a, I didn't want to put that on the table because not everybody can do that. So I wanted to have a simple, don't think army and, and play Death Guard for you guys so you guys can know how to set up. So this is the example. We have our cultists, which will be our scout move guys. They can start pretty aggressively. Uh, Seekers would be a good example for Chaos Space Marines. They can pregame move nine. Uh, for the Imperial Guard, they have the scout move seven or nine inches on the Sentinels. Uh, Eldar, same exact thing. Like anything that can scout move and get into different quarters or on objectives turn one is what you're gonna be bringing in your army uh, every single time. So for these guys, I'm starting them wholly within six inches of the, uh, on the other side of the wall. So you're basically gonna measure 
from the edge of his base on the other side of the wall, wholly within six inches. And same with this one up here. So the reason we do that is because if we don't go turn one, I still want them to be defensive. So I, will, I don't want them to just get yeah, here's 50 points of, of, you know, cultists that I didn't really care about because we do care about them. They're the ones that are going to get us easy secondary points turn one. So if we do go first, then our option is uh, to really focus on the secondaries that we could pick, which are things like area denial, cleanse, um, tempting target, investigate signals, all that stuff. So our scout moves, for me, I have sticky because I'm death guard. Green Knights have sticky. Other armaments have sticky. Um, Chaos has sticky, but they don't have the scout move for the cultists. So these guys, uh, we're thinking right now my hardest one is tempting target on this map. So tempting target, I have to be basically on here. So I'm like seven inches or eight, seven inches away. I only need a one for the advance to get over here. So I'm basically gonna scout move up six. So if they started up wholly within six here, I'm gonna scout move six, which gets me to there. And then I am about six and a half inches. So if I advance onto that for te like tempting target, if they pick that one, I'll be good for this, this one. Over here, they're all gonna go up six inches and stay in coherency. We're gonna move six inches, stay in coherency of two inches, which is really fucking big, that's what she said. So then all these guys basically move up only within you know two inches of each other. This guy's moving up, so he's wholly within six inches of that one, and they're all in uh, coherency. Right about there. And then we're just gonna tag right there so they can make this sticky. And that's an example of a great scout move for Death Guard or anybody that has scout going first. If you're going second, again, you're just moving back on the other side of the wall, so that way they're, they're defensive. Now, infiltrators, a lot of Space Marine armies out there, uh, there's a lot of people that bring the infiltrators that have no deploy outside 12 inches, stuff like that. They are some of the best units uh, in the game, especially when it comes to secondaries. Some of them can go back into, res into reserves for one CP. Some of them can do uh, secondaries. Like there's a lot of uh, different stuff. Custodies have the sisters that can scout move in rhinos. Like there's a lot of different things that you can be, be bringing in your list that are cheap to get you, you turn one secondaries. So for us, a great chaos unit is the nurglings. So the nurglings are gonna be set up on the outside of your deployment zone or in your deployment zone, which is in the center. So that way they can move out and do aerial denial or kind of go out and do cleanse, whatever it may be. These guys are specifically focused on engaging all fronts, cleanse and aerial denial. That's what their main goal on being in these corners are gonna do. Uh, so for aerial denial, that's a really good one for us for turn one. Why that's good is because we want to get wholly within nine inches of the corners of the table edges um, to try and do an action and get two points for each quarter. So for these guys, since they're speed five, whatever speed you guys are, they could be speed five, six, seven, nine, whatever, you're going to be wholly within that speed plus nine inches of the table quarter. So if they're speed five and you have to be wholly within nine, they're starting at least 14 inches uh, wholly within 14 inches of the corner. And that's what we did here. So these guys are wholly within 14 inches of this table quarter. So that way they can back up five and be wholly within nine to do an action in that corner. Same with thing with over here. These guys are wholly within 14 inches of this table quarter. So that way they can back up five inches and be uh, investigate signal over there. The second thing is cleanse. These guys are gonna be walking up and be able to do a cleanse right there, or they are within five inches of that objective, so they can walk up and do a cleanse over there. You also have the center to choose from if you go first. If you go second, it's a little bit harder, but at least you get to walk up, cleanse, cleanse, investigate, investigate. So sometimes we get investigate and cleanse turn one, which if you're not really prepared for it, you might have to get two points or maybe four max. But if we're set up for cleanse and investigate, which is in my mindset every single time I set up my army, I'm gonna be able to cleanse for two, which will get me five points, and then I'm gonna be able to investigate for two to three to get us six points. So four to six points, that's gonna give us nine to 11 points on turn one. That is insane, that is such a huge advantage. The score is already 11 to zero. That's, that, that's insane, guys. So that's how you're gonna be setting up your turn one and your army based off of those secondaries in your head, fuck, what if I get uh, investigate signals? What if I get cleanse? What if I get air of denial? What if I get one of these uh, things that I'm not set up properly for, or my list isn't set up properly for? We can get into a whole list building uh, video later on, but if your list isn't built for doing secondaries, you're gonna fail a lot more off of points than killing your opponent. You could just run fucking all tanks um, and just try and table your opponent or just, 
all quick units that just run forward, but you're gonna lose the game because it's based off of secondaries, especially in 10th edition. So all the top players all over the world are basing their list off of like, specifically, this unit does this, this unit does this, this unit does this, and this one's specifically gonna go kill that. So Drago for me, for Grey Knights, are specifically there to go out and kill a, a demon. That's all he's there to do. Come down, charge a six inch charge out of deep strike and just kill something or take over an objective. That's his whole purpose. Everything else in the army is mainly to be just teleporting all over the table, getting secondaries, focus on killing infantry, um, coming in from reserves for a 40 point uh, inquisitor unit. Everything in your army specifically has to have a role and if the role is just to kill it, great. That unit is there to just kill something else. If it's there to do secondaries, make sure you're focusing on doing secondaries, especially turn one. So those are the examples for the scout moves. Those are the examples for the infiltrators. And then let's go for examples for uh, reserves. So there's a couple different uh, things that you can do for first of the fray for Grey Knights. Some other armies have first of the fray where they can come in uh, one turn earlier. When you're doing that, it's 100% worth it to rapid ingress. Now, again, can you rapid ingress turn one earlier? Some people say no, some people say yes. But even on turn two, so let's say I went first, or let's say he went first, it's now turn two, I'm gonna rapid ingress uh, in their deployment zone if you can, because you're now one turn earlier, so technically it's turn three, which then you can come in your opponent's deployment zone. You're gonna try and rapid ingress to get either a big ass killing unit in the face or to get a secondary going. Some deployments or table setups are the three objectives in the center, which is then Dawn of War deployment or the ones that's uh, from the sides, these objectives are within six inches of the table quarters. So that means if you rapid ingress six inches from the table quarter, let's say a unit of bikes come on or a cursed cultist or something like that, they basically walk on, they're now touching the objective. If you have a character in that unit uh, and you're playing the one where you get six points in the center objectives for having a character on it, you're then gonna, in your turn, control that for six points without even doing anything. You spent one CP to walk on, now you're controlling it for six points. So rapid ingress, first of the fray, turn one uh, deep strikes, turn one reserves, whatever it may be, those are gonna be really good to focus strictly on secondary to get turn one. If your whole army starts in these two quarters and you're thinking about engage for turn one or cleanse or something, you then rapid ingress or bring something in over in that corner so that way you're at least guaranteed engaging all fronts, cleanse, uh, and potentially aerial denial at the same time. So think about those secondaries when you're coming in from reserves or deep striking uh, turn one. First of the fray for Grey Knights, great example, such a good uh, uh, enhancement. I'm bringing my librarian down in that corner right there, right behind that wall, right here. So right behind this wall um, to basically come down and just sit on the objective and just wait. So that way they're blocking out that corner, they have that objective, and then they're just basically waiting until something comes up so that way they can kill something. But at least first of the fray, I'm in that corner for a secondary that I might get uh, turn one. So really good for those three types of units. These guys don't get brought up a lot, but uh, we started running Seekers um, for the Chaos uh, Codex, the Demons Codex. They can basically scout move nine. They're five bodies, big bases for the uh, bikes. You can basically scout move nine, and they're gonna get you the ones that are super hard to get on turn one, like behind enemy lines, uh, aerial denial, um, uh, kill something, uh, really just behind me lines, or attempting target. Like those are gonna be the, the harder ones to get turn one that we could get, but if we have a unit that can either go up and I don't get a good secondary turn one, or I don't get one that is really achievable, or I don't want turn one, they can at least just move up and just block the opponent in the opponent's uh, deployment zone. So that way it's harder for them to get secondaries. So you're basically denying them, denying them primary and denying them secondary. Yes, the unit might die, which most of the time they do, but at least they got their 85 points worth by keeping the opponent in his deployment zone turn one. So that's just to give you an example of something that I've been working on, <laughs> seeker tech for the seekers. So those are the units that are gonna be scout moving, infiltrating, uh, and stuff like that. So let's go over the secondaries for you guys. So give you an example of what we're really looking for. So let's say we shuffle these up. These are just the secondaries that do actions. They're not all the ones built in. Because again, the other ones are random. The ones that you kill stuff is 100% random. Uh, that's completely up to you and how you're, what your opponent gives you to kill. So that's not up, that's not up to you and how you deploy. That's up to how, how your opponent deploys, which again, you can't control. 
the first one, of course, we get behind enemy lines. So I have something like Seekers, they're able to kind of move up and get behind enemy lines at least for us. But with Death Guard or anything like that, it's going to be pretty hard to get behind enemy lines unless I have my infiltrators that are completely outside of nine inches of the deployment zone. Uh, and then they're able to kind of move up and then charge to get something. Hopefully they don't die because even if one guy lives, you then get behind enemy lines turn one. So how I'm going to try and uh, set up for behind enemy lines is either have a unit that's super quick to get their charge turn one. With this deployment, if you have uh, like a really quick unit in a Rhino and there's something on the other side of the wall here, and if you have like an advance and charge like Chaos Space Marines do, they can basically advance and charge, you know, advance out, let's say you get out nine, advance three, that's 12 inches, you basically advance up to there and then you can charge something on the other side of the wall here and then kill it, consolidate, and then get it behind enemy lines. So if you want to play it that way, that would be your really aggressive unit right there. Or if you're playing more the defensive way, the Seekers can then move up, get behind enemy lines. The Nurglings can even do it. Like if you have the Selenium deployment and they're outside nine inches, they move up four or five, and then they have a four inch charge. So if they roll like a five or six or seven, they basically charge in, consolidate, pile in, and get behind enemy lines. So that one is completely up to you. What you're going for, you're going to be super aggressive like world eaters, or you're going to kind of like have one unit that can go out, kill something, or one unit to go out and just block the enemy in the deployment zone. So behind me lines, turn one. Secure no man's land. At the end of your turn, if you control two or more objectives in no man's land, uh, this one should be set up as much as all the other ones that we already went over. So secure no man's land, again, we set that up with the, with the cultists right here. They're able to basically control two objectives in no man's land with one unit. So if they walk up six inches, they can control that one over there, they can control the center, or if they move over here, they can control this one. You won't be able to get all three, but at least you'll be able to control two at the same time. You can then also have, now Nurglings, they are opsec zero, so they can't control anything. They're mainly there for actions and air denial. But if you have a really quick unit in this Rhino or Interceptors for Green Knights, they can basically hop up out of the Rhino 15 inches or move out nine, advance on, onto the objective, Tag the objective, a Curse Cultist, same exact thing. Curse Cultist can just advance up, get onto the objective. So stuff like that, they're gonna be able to spread out and at least tow the objective. You kinda of wanna be defensive, so if you can get on the other side of the wall, get on the other side of the wall. If not, no problem. Just don't have most of you guys die. <laughs> Next thing, um, you control these two. So if you control the center and then one of these corners, that's gonna be your um, secure, secure no man's land. So getting two, uh, Things in the center, you should definitely set up for that one as well. Investigate signal. This is one where, where we went over. Really good if you have infiltrators. Really good if you have scout moves. Really good if you have people that are coming in from reserves. So this one is really good uh, uh, for any one of those types, but if you get a turn one, you have to have had it set up. So if you don't have infiltrators, see if your army has infiltrators or really quick scout moves or coming in turn one, because you really want to plan for investigate signals. There's been so many games that I got this, which made me change my mind on the list that I'm building and setting up for uh, for turn one. So investigate signals, these guys get to move back five, <coughs> those guys are gonna move back five, and then defiler or the 100 point um, flight shroud flesh mower guy is basically just gonna scooch back, be holy within nine inches, and that'll get us six points uh, for turn one for investigate signals. So really good to plan for and deploy for. Engage on all fronts, good combo with investigate signals or good combo with, you know, anything that we're already starting in three quarters. So if I have one unit over here, one unit over there, and one back here, boom, without even moving, without even starting my turn, I'm already set up for engaging all fronts. If you have seekers or a really quick unit that's going to be able to move up, advance, and charge on turn one, you're able to get that in all four corners. If you have first of the fray, for example, Grey Knights, they can basically come down in the opponent's deployment zone. Most of the time, you're going to be blocked out. But if you can come down within three inches, like Grey Knights, again, one of the best armies to do secondaries with, they basically come down within three, uh, maybe behind a wall or just in like a corner where they can't be shot at. They can then get engaged in all fronts on turn one. So engage in all fronts, at least you want to try and get three points to being in three table quarters and then five if you're in all four. So setting that up, infiltrators, perfect for setting that up. Now, if you only have one unit of infiltrators, you want to make sure that if you do get this, you want to be able to hop over into this corner uh, easily with one of your units. So if I have my pre-game move guys, scout move guys here, I can start them right on the line so they can either back up behind the wall or they can move forward and then move forward again. So the scout moves and infiltrators are a really good combo. If you don't have two infiltrator units, if you just have one, you start one in that corner 
And then you have to make sure you get somebody in this corner as well. Some table quarters or some deployments are completely corner, corner to corner or corner to center. You're technically already gonna start in three quarters. So you're starting there, there, and all you have to do is move over about six inches on that side, and then boom, you have uh, three quarters. So extend battle lines. This one is probably one of the easiest ones to get. If you control one or more objective markers in your own deployment zone, which turn one, we're almost always gonna do that, and then control one in the center of uh, no man's land. So you're gonna get one over there, one over there, or one there. As long as you control one of them, you get an easy, easy five points. Anytime we pick this up, it's it's just such an easy five points to get no matter what part of the game you're in. So attempting target, this is one of the harder ones because depending on the, the setup and depending on where you set up, kind of planning out for this is like, all right, if I get tempting target and I don't have anything completely near that objective over there, what the fuck am I gonna do? If they pick that objective in this corner, how do I actually get there? These cults are the only ones that can be able to get there because we plan for it. We plan that if we move up, we're gonna try and get tempting target on that on that objective. If they pick the center, easy. If they pick that one, easy. So if I pick this and the opponent's like, fuck, because he already knows, I'm gonna get one of these three guaranteed no matter what turn one. If this uh, cultist unit was more over there, I don't have anything over here because these guys are opsec zero, the Nurgle, Nurglings, so they can't control that objective. He's like, all right, I'm gonna pick that one. And then if I don't want to first the fray or somebody that's gonna come down deep strike turn one, um, you might want to save this tempting target because if you're controlling these two objectives and you have somebody coming in turn two over here, you, you might be good. But this is also a hard one. It could screw you because if you keep it and then they flood the zone, like well, let's say with 20, 30, 40 cult or cursed cultists, like we would, that's gonna be the tempting target next turn. So you're like, well, well shit, I, I, I don't have, I can't. So you just wasted a whole turn of getting a secondary for another zero. So tempting target's really good for turn one if you set up for it. If you don't set up for it, it's gonna be really hard. Now, if you have infiltrators like Space Marines, you can put two infiltrated units in the corners and they basically just walk out and just tow the, tow the center so that way you have at least all three no man land secondaries or objectives that you can try and get something target. So that one, Space Marines, really easy. Cleanse, also really easy. So cleanse, you only need two. There's three objectives usually in, in no man's land. So if you set up for two uh, of these to get cleanse, cleanse is almost one of the ones where if you don't start planning for it, you're gonna hate it. So you don't wanna have really any of these secondaries, the ones that we're talking about now, the other ones are again, all random. But these ones that you're talking about right now are 100% achievable as long as you either make a list for it or plan it out with deployment turn one. So cleanse, again, I used to hate, especially with playing Grey Knights because I would start all my guys in the far back corner because I had teleport assault. So I was too used to just picking them up and putting them anywhere on the table. But if you don't, if you go first and you get cleanse, now you're like, great, I'm fucking 30 inches away from the center. I can't get cleanse. So having interceptors in the unit or in the army, uh, which are, you know, jump infantry, a lot of uh, armies have jump infantry, even just a cheap man, five man squad could be a secondary unit for you with space marines or something like that for chaos. They basically just hop up 12 inches, do a, do an action, and then just, you know, make up their points uh, doing it that way. But cleanse, for the nerglings, they're really good at adding it uh, into a, an army because they could basically walk up, do cleanse, aerial denial, investigate signals, engage in all fronts. So many different secondaries. If one unit can do that for you, 100% put multiple of them in your list. So for cleanse, we can walk up to cleanse in the center pretty easily. We can do cleanse over here, we can do cleanse over there, uh, again, with any one of the uh, units that we put down on the table. So cleanse, 100% you wanna try and plan for going out on turn one. Aerial denial, another one where it works if you end your turn with one more unit totally within six inches. So this could be good uh, if they went first as well. Because if they move out anywhere on the center of the of the objective, you could basically move up and charge, killing that unit, and then consolidating back onto the objective uh, in the center, or charging, not killing them, but still ho being wholly within six inches of the center. But wholly within six inches of the center is actually off of the objective a little bit over there, meaning that if you end, you know, a base right here your unit's still wholly within six inches of the center, and they're not wholly within three inches of the center. The unit has to be wholly within three inches, so it's really hard to defend against, but it's really hard to gain. So I can either walk up and have my unit wholly within six inches of the center, I can have a, a Nurgle unit, if you started them right on the corner here, they can move up five inches or advance and be wholly within six inches of the center. 
you don't have to do an action. It's basically just end your turn fully within six inches of center. But if there's a uh, enemy unit that is wholly within six inches of center, which is again hard to do, or <laughs> within three inches of the center, you get three instead of five. But this one is really good to plan for it for turn one because if you have a scout move, it makes it so much easier. If you have guys that are, you know, even speed six on the other side of this nine inches, they can move up and be wholly within wholly within six inches of the center. Now, a good tactic with this is you don't actually want to be as far forward unless you plan for that, but you kind of want to keep your unit as far back as they possibly can and still be wholly within six inches. Kind of like this even you know one touching, but everything else is pretty far back. Kind of like that. So that way that gives them a little bit further of a charge over there. Um, and you know, if you're playing Grey Knights, you don't want them to be within nine inches anyway. So that's an example for somebody like Grey Knights, or if you just want to have a Cursed Cultist unit, they're basically having one on the objective. If they kill you, you then pop out three onto the objective, and now you have you know eight. Uh, obsec on that center objective, which is really hard for them to counter because you're just making them every single turn. So, Aerial Denial, really good one for turn one. Deploy Teleport Homers. This one's kind of tricky uh, because if you have a really quick unit, like Seekers, for example, you can move up, scout move, and then move up 14 and just tow your foot into their deployment zone to get an easy five points for teleport, uh, Deploy Teleport Homers. That's for if you're in your opponent's deployment zone. If you're in no man's land, all you have to do is be within six inches, just a unit, not wholly within, just within. So you just basically tow within six inches of the center, you can easily get three points uh, for deployed teleport homers. So this one, you do need to do an action. So you're sacrificing shooting, sacrificing charging, um, but at least if you have a cheap infantry unit or a unit that's made to do secondaries for you, they're basically walking up and getting you three points turn one or five if they're really quick uh, coming in the opponent's deployment zone. Now, first deployment or uh, ingress, so you won't be able to get in the deployment zone turn one, uh, unless you're coming in from turn two, but if you have like first of the fray or something that can deep strike turn one, like a drop pod or something like that, all you have to do is tow in the deployment zone, um, and then you're able to get the deploy teleport homers for five, which obviously would be your goal to get the most. But there you go. Those are the the secondaries, the nine of them that we're basically looking to do. Turn one, and if you set up for it or deploy for it or have an army built for it, you're going to notice a huge difference when it comes to. 10th edition scoring points with the secondaries. Now, that is really just all the chaff units that you're mainly doing it for. You can have tanks, you know, get out there. You can have rhinos get out there. You can use the rhinos to your advantage uh, by moving them. You know, if you start this like over there, the rhino can move up 12, which is pretty quick. So the rhino can even hop up here into the objective or advance onto the objective. So use your tanks however way you see fit. But remember that tanks can also do actions. Tanks can move back and do actions. Tanks can be in uh, different deployment zones. Tanks can do cleanse. Like this edition, anything that you have on the table can basically do an action. Last edition, there's some things like a Curse Cultist or, or units like that that can't do actions specifically. Uh, or you had to have like units over uh, a certain number, over five, over six, whatever, over three. Uh, but this edition, it's all about being eligible to shoot and not being battle shocked. So as long as your unit is not battle shocked, as long as your unit is eligible, eligible to shoot, you're able to do secondaries. So make sure that if you advance, they have a, an assault weapon, or they have a stratagem that gives them an assault weapon, or they can advance and, and, and do an action. Something like that, like these guys can fall back, can fall back and, and, and be eligible to shoot or charge. So since they can do that and they're in combat, they're able to fall back, shoot and charge. I don't think we have anything that has uh, advance and in, in, in action in Death Guard. Maybe there's there's an assault weapon somewhere, but I, I, don't, I can't think of it at the top of my head. But Green Knights have a 1 CP strat that gain assault keywords on their psychic weapons. So a unit like uh, Interceptors, they can advance auto 6, so they go 18 inches. Uh, they'd go 21 inches out of a, out of a rhino. <laughs> uh, and then you can spend 1 CP so that way they get the assault keyword. So they're eligible to shoot. And then they do an action. So something like that would be a good example of involving your keywords, your assault, and uh, 
stratagems to try and do secondaries as well. So again, all the other ones that you have an option of bringing or picking are completely random. It's completely set up on what they do in their deployment, what they give you for units to shoot or kill. Uh, and sometimes armies don't even have uh, example, bring it down. So Grey Knights, I usually don't bring a tank or anything like that. So they can't even get bring it down. If they pick it, they can't sub it out. Like they can't put it automatically back or they can't automatically get it. So that was weird when we saw that, but at least for bring it down, if there's nothing that you can get on the other side of the table, you kind of just have to ditch it for a free CP or spend one CP to get rid of it and pick another secondary as well. So let's make sure that we're planning uh, when we're, making an army and doing secondaries that we're planning to get these specific secondaries done turn one to the best of our abilities and if we do that trust me guys you will see a huge difference when it comes to scoring and winning games in 10th edition so hopefully this video helped you guys out hopefully it found you well again share this video if you guys want to uh, help uh, support the channel and get this out to all of your communities all over the place share in discords facebook wherever, wherever you guys are, are online and if you guys want to support the channel, head over to Patreon. We are selling a bunch of uh, stickers, uh, projected markers, dice, all that fun stuff uh, over on Discord. And if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you hit and subscribe so these videos actually pop up for you guys and then do the algorithm. We're almost up to 5,000 subscribers. Probably by the time you see this video, we'll already hit 5,000 subscribers. And at that time, we're probably going to do a huge drunk uh, fest game where we'll play a uh, drunk machine. Basically, you put a can down as a uh, impassable terrain. <laughs> right when you finish it. So that's just an idea thrown up for the dirtbags. So that's gonna be coming up once we have 5,000 subscribers and we are going to LBO. So if you guys are at LBO and you wanna come up and say to me that you're a dirtbag, you get a limited edition dirtbag dice uh, and hopefully you'll enjoy it as much as I did last year with LBO uh, over out in Las Vegas. So I appreciate you guys. Good luck with everything. And we'll see you in another video soon. What's up gents, 40K Dirtbags. So we got a bunch of stuff that we're gonna be selling up on the channel. Uh, we're constantly getting uh, updated dice for the Dirtbag logo on it. Those are gonna be sold for a dollar each. If you guys are interested, hit me up on Discord. And also all of the stickers are sold on Discord as well. Usually you can buy the stickers and dice at the same time. We ship globally, so that's really good. That's the benefit of you know buying it through us, as well as they're all custom logos. You can't get these anywhere else. There's gonna be more to come. Give suggestions in the comments below or over at Discord on what new stickers or uh, people they want me to create, as well as the objective markers that are provided through 3D6 Wargaming. The link is in the bottom of every single video that's out on YouTube. And also with everything that's coming up, there's also um, models that we 3D print uh, to give to you guys. All the models on the screen over here are available for sale. Uh, they aren't officially GD, GW models, they are proxies. Uh, they just can stand in for any models you guys play on the tabletop. So appreciate all the support. Thanks for clicking on the video. Hopefully you, you donate and support to the channel to grow Dirtbag Nation. But if not, no worries. Uh, the like, subscribe is just as good. Appreciate it, guys. Good luck, and we'll see you in another video soon.